Hey, this is Naomi. Ari. Treasure. Emmy. We are Caribbean cousins. Having open. Candid conversations. About our upbringing. And much more. Continue listening to. Spill the tea with us. us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got it. Mm-hmm. Hey, cousins. Hey, y'all. Hi. How y'all doing? I'm good. Y'all good? What y'all been up to this week? Work, mm. sleep, sleep and work. work. I quit Feel my that. job. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you watch the other podcast, that is no surprise. <laughs> that is absolutely no surprise. It's Fourth of July, mm. and I don't feel like July in. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I'm celebrating my husband's birthday, but also just keeping to myself. Oh, he used birthday's Fourth of July yeah okay because i remember you said i just want to celebrate his birthday i was like oh his birthday is like the fifth or something <laughs> Mm-mm. his birthday is today my late grandmother's birthday is today and Rizal, our cousin's birthday is today oh, oh it's a birthday filled day yeah mm-hmm. so just thinking about them and that's enough for me mm-hmm. i have my juneteenth so i'm good <laughs> <laughs> how y'all doing <laughs> I'm doing good. I was off this weekend and it was weird. I'm never off on the weekend and I had nothing to do. The plans that I had got canceled, so I had nothing to do. So I started like a health journey-ish. It's a health journey Mm because I want to lose a few pounds of just like body fat. Like I want to lower my BMI. So yeah, we are on that journey Oh, sorry. But be careful looking at that BMI stuff because while it is accurate to an extent, it doesn't consider black bodies because you know no. our fat makeup is a little bit different than like the white person they were t- that they were doing these researches on. Because I am naturally fit. So. <laughs> <laughs> even if you, I feel like doing slight changes, not telling you what to do, but just in general, like even just drinking water would help. Because I know I don't drink enough water. And that's yeah, me. I just ruined my that alone, one tiny step at a time, baby. Yeah. So what I'm basically trying to do is in, just incorporate more like fruits, vegetables, and like I started to count calories, but I wanted to see how much I could eat, mm-hmm. like and what like what combination of everything like makes most sense for me. And I realized I'm not eating enough because I don't know like what that limit is. You know, mm-hmm. like sometimes I'll eat like a lot of the bad stuff and that's like of course like overdoing it for me but I could eat like a lot of the healthy stuff but my my issue that I'm running into is like I'm still freaking hungry like I talked to y'all earlier about it Mm -hmm. like last night I was like I was in my bed I was like I'm still hungry like I don't know what else to eat that's so healthy to me that I have in my house so I was like I'm just gonna go to bed like uh, I'm done and I got out of my bed at two o'clock in the morning and got myself a granola bar because I, I was done. I hopped up out of bed. I ran to like mm-hmm. my game room. I opened it and I ate it and I went back to sleep. Question <laughs> though. So are you yeah. the kind of person that likes to write things down or would it be better for you to track through an app? Which one would be better? Like handwriting or through an app? I'm an app girl. My fitness pal. Everyone yes, I know. That's that, what I'm using. Yeah. Great. Because like so, a food diary. Mm-hmm. Because I cannot keep up with like a physical diary. So this one I could actually like have. So I have three apps that I'm using right now. I'm using my fitness pal. I'm, I got a new scale so I could track like my weight um, in a healthy way. So I'm not like reminded of it all the time. It just stays in the app. Um, so it has like the BMI, but it also has like my weight and how like an in- influx. Because I wanted to see like what my natural like weight is like throughout the day I know it, it might seem a little bit weird but like do you know throughout you have morning skinny like in the morning like you feel like your stomach's like a little, little bit flatter than in the afternoon I wanted to see like what that actually was so I did that and then I also just like it it tracks it in the app so that's been helpful as well so I don't have to consistently like write that down and I also used a productivity app as well that has like habits that you can like track so like I have three habits I have like um exercise or just like walking uh drinking water and taking vitamins right now because I always forget to take my vitamins even though they're right there I just forget to so 
that's in there as mm. well so I have to like look at it and like remind myself of it but yeah that's been like my stuff so what are you guys' favorites this week any favorites <laughs> not really well I guess I'm gonna talk again <laughs> <laughs> So I went to Austin for the day um, and I got, I went to this like gift store type place and they have like a lot of small owned businesses in like one part of the store and they like sell different things. Like um, there's a whole like wall for like different candles, different trinkets. And there's um, a part that has a small owned business that makes loose leaf tea. And I got their, um, it's called white, I think it's Arawak chai. And it is so good. So that's what I'm drinking right now. It's delicious. Mm. That's my favorite for the week. Is that the self-heating mug? No, I don't have that type of money yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my bad. I see those kind of mugs. You know what I mean? Like the, it's, it kind of looks like that because the bottom has that heavy look to it. I just thought it was yeah. bad. It is oh. heavy, but this is my New York mug. My Yankees. I mug. got you. Brooklyn in this, you know. <laughs> Remind me again where you said you got that tea online like um so i got it in austin oh, yeah. i oh. will let you know and i'll probably put in the description oh. one day i'm gonna actually put these things in the description <laughs> but <laughs> but i'll put it in the description um of the actual brand it is but i know it's a small business i oh i got excited i was like i have a couple favorites hold up now so this is what happens i try not to follow a bunch of youtubers i don't buy a bunch of stuff i don't need because i buy enough stuff but I saw this product, the serum you use to kind of help with humidity. And once I remember what it is, I'll, I'll like share with you, but you spray it on your hair. And then when you straighten your hair, it's like a water repellent. And I so I saw, and it comes in a silver bottle. So I yes. was online like Ulta, uh, Sephora, who has it? And Ulta had it. So I added it to my car and I faded it up the next day. So I got the serum. Then I got a spray, a thermal spray. And I got the recommendations, not only from the YouTuber, but a, a person that was a cosmetologist for like 20, 30 years affirmed that and said, this is what you do use. Boom, boom, boom. I was only going to get two things from the list. I got those two things from the list. They're all for like, if you straighten your hair, you, you know, and you can do it in the summer. They're pretty much saying you can press your hair in the summer and it will stay for an amount of time. Usually when I go get a silk press, it lasts two weeks. But if I do it by myself, it's not going to do that. I should be able to like do that for myself. So there's that. And another favorite I added to the cart was um, I got Lang Lang essential oil and I got um, patchouli. Now it's not at the standard of like doTERRA essential oils, like the strength, but I still felt like I want to start making my own es essential oil fragrance mm. because there's somebody that I meet and he always smells really good. And he tells me he mixes all these essential oils together in his lotions. And I'm like, I want to smell like earthy and natural so I'm gonna make my own like essential oil set that's like unique to me so I just got like mm. two extra ones to add to my collection um and yeah that thermal thing some essential oils I, I'm i really about that so is it pronounced lang -ylang or yell lang -ylang? girl I just I like the way lang lang sounds but I actually don't know how it sounds and I was trying to think of <laughs> I don't know someone gotta tell me I no, always said e -lang. But you that's like, probably wrong too. That's probably yeah, wrong not too. That's just what I say in my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say yelling, yelling, but it always just feels weird. <laughs> yelling, yelling. <laughs> that sounds country. <laughs> I like that one. I like yelling, yelling. No, that's actually, funny. guys, let's look up like the actual pronunciation <laughs> so we're not like out here. I would <laughs> love for someone to actually like say in the comments no this is it i'm like thank you boo like someone tell us please y'all comment like how you say it how do you say it comments. again i mean how do you spell it again y-l-a-n-g 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 you like it's you like you right yeah. <laughs> hold on oh rub this all over her and just want to sit and this, what in the world you want to do what to her it literally was like a pronunciation of elang or 
you know, plant video. <laughs> and it was just that. Like, and he was just, like holding it in his hand. But hold on, I think this is a real thing. Ilang Ilang. Ilang Ilang. Ilang Ilang. Ilang Ilang. Ilang Ilang. I like it. Ilang Ilang. Okay. So I was kind of right. Yeah, I was just about to say it was a too far off. Ilang Ilang. Ilang Ilang Central Oil. Absolutely. Where can I find the Ilang Ilang Central Oil at HEB? Yeah, and uh, Ulta has a, it's not super strong, but I'm like, I just needed a basic one because I want to try it right now. Because Oterra is expensive. I didn't want to spend that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Any other favorites for the week? No. No. Nope. All right. Awesome. Ariel, you want to introduce a topic? All right, everyone. So today we're talking about how. Well, you know, growing up with Caribbean parents and we're just balancing two different societies, we're so different to what our parents know and like what they're used to. So today we're kind of going to be diving into like ways we've had to suppress ourselves in order to not even because you wanted to fit in or have your parents approval, but because or maybe it was for those reasons. And also because, because you just couldn't stand to hear the noise that came with stuff. So for all three reasons, really. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody want to start before I start rapping? You can go you can ahead. Rap, I, I, think <laughs> I, might, I might take a different approach and have like an opposite. Because like, <laughs> I think I would talk about it from the sense of sometimes I was okay with it being like me being mm-hmm. myself at home sometimes. But sometimes I would suppress myself like in the outside world. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, you go ahead and you go off. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not going to go off. It's not that kind of chat. But you know, what brought this to my attention as like a topic that we should talk about is because the other day, you know, I have my septum pierced. I put it up, I put it down, you know, obviously at the funeral I put it up not even because of family but just because you know we're at a funeral you know let's keep it let's keep it classy not that a septum piercing isn't classy if that's your style but you know just to have a more polished face but whatever um yeah so today and my mom has always known about it she doesn't care but today but y'all as y'all know I live with my grandmother you know lovely person but you know old people so today I was like not let me show it to her, but let me like, cause you know, I was running out the door to work, you know, telling her bye. I was like, well, let me just start sneaking it in the picture. You know, mm-hmm. she noticed right away. And she was just like, uh, you know, had to give me that attitude before I walked out the door. And then whenever I got my parents down, all this phone call, <laughs> about how I'm being led to the ways of the devil and oh how she's praying and then um I was just like okay grandma I love you and I hung up the phone and then like a couple of seconds later like it's all these scriptures from her and I was just like of course I was just like like of course you feel bad to a certain extent because it's like I would never want to upset you you know I love you but at the same time, it's like, you just have to have a, when you, it's about the respect that you have for yourself as a growing individual and as an adult. Like, why should I actually have this mundane, a nose piercing y'all? Like, why should I have to um, cover this up? because somebody else is gonna have an issue. And it's like, you know what? It's okay for them to have an issue. I just don't have to hear about it though. And, you know, and that's probably always gonna come, but I'm just talking about that. Just certain things that I'm sure you've all experienced. Like when I was young, I was really into like a lot of different things. Like Mm -hmm. I remember because living with one of my cousins, she would always say, oh, I'm the white man's child because I'm into this, this, and this. And, you know, I just took Mm -hmm. it as a joke because I was already being called Oreo in school. But like, it was, you know, those things really got to me because it's like, like, first of all, like if you knew anything, you would not be calling me that. And then it's just like, why can't I have different interests? Mm-hmm. Why can't I 
like be just a multifaceted black person like why do I have to just <sighs> there's a lot of things that contribute to that because we're just so different from what they know like mm-hmm. like me and my mom talk about this all the time like how she went to high school you know because I've seen my mom's high school in Guyana and it um you know how I'm going to high school or just school in general you know growing up two completely different countries, two completely different things. And one thing my mom can recognize is because of this difference that people growing up in the Caribbean, Guyana, you know, they can be very ignorant simply to that fact. Let me not say ignorant. Hold on, edit that out. Let me let me let me clarify my words. It, ignorant is not ignorant always is, bad. It's yeah. a lack of it's a yeah. lack of okay. awareness. It's unfortunately it's just you don't <clears throat> know. Mm-hmm. A lack of awareness because they just don't they really only know what's in front of them. For sure. You know, like a lot of people in America, you know. Yeah. It's the same the like the same kind of concept. But it's how we react to it, right? Because mm-hmm. it's if you if you grow up as like Caribbean parents, um, to them being honest is a normal conversation. But to us, it's mm-hmm. like like if I meet someone, they just say, You look you look hungry or you look skinny or that's a normal conversation, but to me, that's rude. Mm-hmm. If you come up to me and talk about my body, I think that's really rude. And mm-hmm. so I shut down because you're talking about something I can't fix right away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, am I, what am I gonna do? So to me, that's rude, but in their culture, that's just like, hi, how are you doing? Yeah. Just, I'm gonna point like, this out. That's the difference between like willful, willful ignorance, like you're okay with being ignorant mm-hmm. and actually just not knowing culture too being like wow. totally ignorant like again about the weight thing like people coming up to be like you look fat mm-hmm. first and then you telling them hey don't say that to me we're talking about caribbean people right now right yeah oh, I'm yes. talking about caribbean oh, yeah, people. yeah. Um, and them saying you saying i don't say that to me i don't like that i don't appreciate it to me in my culture it does not match which i've had these conversations multiple times Mm-hmm. and there's usually two different reactions one reaction is oh sorry my bad I didn't mean anything of it but I won't address that with you in the future or their most popular one oh whenever I say it doesn't mean anything so there's two separate like ign- anyway but yeah I feel like ignorance is not a bad word to like say okay that. yeah because I just get so weary with that word because um especially whenever it comes to saying that about adults not even if it's like calling them ignorant but like calling what they did ignorant because like certain situations where like I used that word not in a bad way and the way it was reacted towards me was like from everybody else was you can't call me that because you're a child like I was probably like 17 at the time you know that was how it was like you have no right to say that word to me I am an adult I know you know that you know that I'll tell you that (laughs) And, you know, I understand that it's just talking about, but, like, at the end, it's, like, I wasn't even calling them ignorant. I was saying what they did was ignorant. But, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, I understand. That's a very, ugh, I understand exactly what you mean. So, kind of bring us back to what you're saying. I do want to stay on. I don't want to fall yeah. too off the top oh, of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, kind of like what you were saying as to where, like, some people especially like a Caribbean household, they just do not understand you and how you want to express yourself. Mm -hmm. Because again, two different cultures. They did a whole bunch of stuff that in our culture, when they were growing up, it would, it would heavily be side-eyed. So Mm -hmm. for me to come in like a crop top and shorts Mm -hmm. and for you to call me all out my name or just give me all the looks it's not like what are you doing there's no reason for you to be addressing with me like that I know and then it's like one it's everybody you know (laughs) it's not even like it's just your parents because you know everybody feels like they can say something to you you know, even in front of your parents, not in front of your parents, so it's just, like, like, where do you go, like, you just feel so isolated, like, you just feel so alone, like, dang, like, just, like, you know, like, it feels like an attack, because it's, like, why is everybody just, like, picking on me right now, 
<laughs> yeah. I think being part of a big family, it's overwhelming. We come from mm-hmm. a really big, most people, most of us sitting here, like we have aunties, we live with uncles right down the road. Then we go to a church with aunties, uncles, cousins. It is a lot, a lot of opinions. It's like, you know, social media already has that. Well, we just grew up mm-hmm. having that full time. So, and another thing, I think it's one of the reasons why I wanted to continue talking with the cousins in general, because there's this transition that from, from, a, from childhood to adolescent to adult, which is like youth, young adult, where your opinion doesn't matter and you feel that and you feel like you have nothing to contribute to conversations because that's how you're mm-hmm. spoken to. And then you go away to college and you still sort of get that, but it's not until you leave the home and you pay bills and you, and you show your independence that you get a smidge of respect. And I've seen how most of us get spoken to and I've, hear, I've heard like our frustrations and I'm like, I went through that too. And even though I'm like 10 years older, like, trust me, I'm still recovering from those the way I was spoken to. I'm, I'm not like so far removed from that that I don't feel that pain still. Yeah. So I, I want us, I wanted us to, as cousins to come together and be like, well, they supposed to be like, yeah, it's supposed to be like that too, because you're not alone. Like I got told to take out my jewelry before I attended. I got told to like, Hey, hi, we're about to go spend time with these people. And they're this, can you take out your jewelry? And mm-hmm. I'm a kid. Of course I have to take out my jewelry. I'm a kid. But as I got older, it would still happen to me. And I was able to be like, hi, no. I, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, I'm not doing that because if I do this, I already paid for this with my own money and my ear is going to close up for, hey, um, I know you asked me to do this, but unfortunately I'm unavailable. Why? Well, because I'm an adult now and I have the space to, mm-hmm. I have the space to grow and I have the space to become myself. Yeah. With the separation, then I can be able to say no. But when you're in it, it's hard and it's rough. I don't mm-hmm. think we talk about how uncomfortable that transition is from our, our parents seeing us as like, we're, we're, we have, I have an opinion, I have feelings, I'm, I'm building a life that's a little bit different from you. Can you respect that? Maybe you don't, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm, I'm me, you know, and it's maybe a slight different, but you know, I'm, I'm me. It's just this is what she gonna get, you know? That's a hard transition. Um, it's a little uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because one thing in that like serenade of scriptures that my grandma was sending me after seeing my um, piercing was my sweet little innocent girl, my sweet like she has bubble. And it's just like, because, you know, my grandma took care of me when I was a baby, when I was a toddler. So we really built a bond there because, you know, she was like the mother figure in my life, you know, being nurturing and stuff like that. And, you know, well, I'll always have that place in my heart with my grandma. But it's like, I'm 20. <laughs> I don't even live here anymore. <laughs> At least not full time. Like, it's, it's just. Because, <sighs> you know, my mom, my own mother has been accepted the fact that I'm not like some kind of little girl but like my grandma it's like don't take her some time Mm -hmm. you just showed it to her so go and take her just keep showing a little something show a little shoulder you know no I know I mean you know what ever since I've gone to college I really have but you know it's taking time yeah Mm -hmm. I can tell you I'm 30 I'm still they still they still shocked by me baby they still uh, <laughs> what you doing what you're not what like it's a trend it's gonna take them mm-hmm. some time yeah yeah See, for me it was a for the most part it wasn't at home like yeah I had those com- like those comments happen like kind of in my house but mostly my mom didn't care what I showed but my uh, people in church did mm. but like I feel like my suppressor was definitely me showing off my like personality my style like to other people like I was super shy and I still am pretty shy and like more towards myself and I am not a shy person mm-hmm. at all like do you guys know me for being shy no exactly <laughs> I <laughs> like remember most- you being oh somebody else talked no you go 
Yeah. I was just gonna say, like, you know, growing up in church when I was like pre teenagers and you were a teenager, I remember how much you loved stilettos. Like your whole thing was just like so I know y'all remember this era. Naomi and the stilettos, okay? Pulling up to church, high as heels. She's already tall, everybody. Like she's aren't you like five nine, five ten? Yeah, I'm five eight, five nine. Okay. Yes. And then like you're putting on these like six inch stilettos. I was like, yes every time (laughs) comes in the church (laughs) that was me and then I would remember like all these like comments like why she got on such high heels she needs to calm down and it's just like bro like that's the stuff that we're talking about here people (laughs) yeah like oh I remember my favorite shoes Keisha bought me uh, from Rue 21 she got me these red, bright red pumps. Okay. And again, these are like the 46 inch heels. And they had, um, I think they had spikes on them too. I love those things so much. Mm-hmm. Everybody hated them because they were bright red. Yeah. And I think I remember think, those shoes. Yeah, people were like, oh, why well, you have on such bright shoes in a church? Mm-hmm. I don't care. My mom didn't care either. So I did not care. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I need to thank Keisha for those because that, that was the best gift of my teenage years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but um, so yeah, that's what I had in like mostly the church, but also like in school and stuff. I just was super shy or people just thought I was mean. I have a resting bitch face, but people just, I was just to myself, mainly because like I did it whenever I had I just represented myself differently than everybody else Mm -hmm. and it made me super shy and I felt like more so like I had to like protect myself and protect my personality that's still a thing that I do to this day which I need to work on um where I will not show people my personality at all you don't come Um, out your shell it takes you a while to come out your shell kind of thing yes and I'm a very one-on-one person, so I could take myself out of my shell with, like, a few people at a time, but um, it also hinders my career, but that's a whole other topic, but because um, I've had so much outside criticism about my personality that it takes me a second mm-hmm. to really, yeah, to express my personality, express my thoughts and feelings, because I, I have had it to where like people would dig into my personality and I don't care when people talk about my looks. I've had people talk about my looks since like the day I was born mm-hmm. actually. Cause like I used to have eczema all on my face and my cheeks were white because like the flesh on my cheeks was showing. So I'm used to people talking about how I look and stuff like that, but I hate when people talk about my personality. So mm-hmm. that was my like big struggle. And like, I, I have anxiety. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm that was my like experience with everything like it was more so like how people react to me being a first generation Caribbean American Mm -hmm. versus me versus like me having that being told in my house because my mom's pretty accepting about most of the things that I do even though she didn't Mm -hmm. understand whenever I wanted to watch Doctor Who or whenever Mm -hmm. like I was okay with listening to punk rock Mm -hmm. she didn't understand that but (laughs) But the way that I look, she really didn't mind. My grandma did, but like, eh. yeah. Yeah, them comments from the older folk. I would put on makeup and go downstairs. She'd be like, you look like you make up dead. Like whenever, like the funeral, talking about funeral makeup. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> But you got, but you gotta admit though, the makeup from back in the day till now is so drastic. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we're oh, heavy God. now. Back then, it was like a little blush, some <laughs> concealer. You draw one line over your eye. It's so basic, heavy <laughs> eyeshadow. Everybody lined their lips black from the nineties. Oh my, my bad. Mm-hmm. I must even remember the nineties. I must. Sorry, bro. I forgot. I forgot. Whoa. Everyone's mom did the black lip around the thing Mm -hmm. with some lip gloss over. And they do it now and looks anyway, but 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just remember that it was all these looks, but now it's almost like how many different layers of contour can I add? Nothing wrong with it. I love when it's done, um, but it's just different. It's different. I feel like we don't understand one another. Like the generations are like, what are y'all doing? And I'm like, what are y'all doing? And then like, <laughs> there is a miscommunication. Like we don't understand one another. Yeah, definitely. I, I think okay, so I'm gonna say for the older generation, yeah, like there's not much of like a, what like understanding. But I really feel like um I'll say younger millennials ish to like the current generation right now they kind of have an understanding and like we kind of all fuck with each other like Mm -hmm. this it actually makes sense like I understand you guys um but yeah the older generation they're like yeah I don't know what y'all doing and I don't approve of it and I'm gonna make every single comment in the world to let you know know. like my parents are in their 60s so that they have a whole life ahead of me like I think in my 30s now I'm like Ooh, so glad I'm here. What's next? And they're like, I done that twice. So if you need some help, I'm like, I don't really want your help, but I did it twice. So if you need some help, let me know. They want to help me because they're like, I seen the struggles you're going through. And so it's it's an interesting position to be in. And sometimes it kind of sucks because, like, yes, you've done it twice, but you did it in a different economy than me. So <laughs> your help's True. not gonna really like help me as much. But I, I still, I still feel like we have more in common than we don't have in common. If we were really to talk, mm-hmm. have you ever seen our mom's transcripts from college? It is wild. Transcripts. Like, yeah, one time I saw my mom's transcripts from college, like her college transcript. Oh, and, like, well, the same, I, my bad. Sorry. She, my mom went to, uh, my mom went to um, Adventist College too, and so I'm able to see. You was like me. That means you did so and so, and you. I don't. I just feel like I have to. I, I have to remember that my mom, even though we're very different, we're probably more alike. We just don't talk about how like how much we have in common because our parents don't really like talk about like what they really really go through. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, let me ask Emerald. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like you're able to be yourself at home and we all have different layers obviously we keep certain things for ourselves but do you feel like you're able to be yourself at home 1000 percent. yeah I feel like that's amazing for us it's it's, it's kind of a zoo over here low-key but <laughs> for us I don't know it's just maybe because of my dad like he He's already cool. has that like crazy not crazy mm-hmm. but he's got that mm-hmm. open personality that he mm-hmm. shares with the children and so when we see that he's comfortable then me and Malia my younger sister we're able to be comfortable too and my mom mm-hmm. same way too so we over here I mean we just Malia will say whatever she on her mind she said everyone laughs wow. or whatever <laughs> like I say whatever I got on my mind about this person that person <laughs> he did this and we talk about it or we laugh about it like it's I'm, I'm glad that we have a able to have that comfortable space where we just like say not do whatever but like personality wise mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. like I feel like I share more who I am at home than outside mm-hmm. that's exactly how I feel yeah I think it's because because I've moved back and forth so much the one thing that I've had about the whole time moving back and forth is my family mm-hmm. so I'm glad that I have that. So I'm trying to see what else. I feel like the one thing, hmm, one thing that I've suppressed, you know, outside world has been my personality. And the thing that I've helped, I mean, the thing that has helped with that was like my style. I haven't, well, maybe I just haven't heard it like, to my face, but I haven't felt any like, criticism criticism or suppression from like the way I dress or my style I love I love my style I love my fashion and even within the different um schools I've been to I went to a white SDA school in Michigan and then I transferred to a white public school here in Texas and I was just 
that I was just able to just wear whatever I felt comfortable to me. Even if it was, you know, bomber shirt in an all white school where they like trump you, know, they mm-hmm. like a bomber. I, I still wore the shirt. <laughs> I wore the shirt. And some white lady complimented me too. I was like, thank you. Mm-hmm. My president. <laughs> I didn't say some that, white but. lady. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like who are you? I don't know who she was. I think she was a teacher or staff or something. But anyways, like I just always felt comfortable to express different um parts of me mm-hmm. to the outside world. Now with my personality that has been an up and down just because I don't know, it's it's hard to like open up and then leave and open up and then leave Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to get comfortable with being open and like Mm -hmm. it's okay like next two years you end up leaving like at least you made a good relationship with this person at least now you have great friends and that's why I'm glad that I kept my friendship from middle school for so long I'm so glad that I was able to have those people for those moments because now they're my best friends I'm in I'm in college like we're in different parts of the world now but we're still great friends Mm -hmm. So I really think it's just like that foundation I had at home that really has helped me how I navigate about the outside world. That's one thing I liked about the youngest siblings of my parents is like they were so lighthearted. I mm-hmm. told myself, if I'm going to be an auntie, I'm going to be a cool auntie. Like I, I talked to my niece that way, like, yo, what you need to tell me, it's okay. Just between me. Like, like, if you need to talk to me, like I will, I will protect whatever is going on, you know? So mm-hmm. as long as it's not like detrimental to your he- health, but I loved how playful Uncle Current was, Uncle Carl. Um, I don't even have to call him Uncle. I can be like Carl. He's like, what's up? Like, I love that lightheartedness, not taking everything so seriously. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how they maintain that calmness, that coolness. Obviously they're serious, but they're easy to approach. Mm-hmm. And that makes yeah. it, helps me be myself more. And I don't have to be this stuck up adult just because I'm a little older like I can be lighthearted. I can just be laid back I have I love yeah. talking about serious things but I can just be a goofball mm-hmm. my mom is a goofball but she only shows it at home and I have that side of me I am a dork to the, I can laugh at myself so hard mm-hmm. I'm weird and I can do that at home but people won't see that side of me I don't know how they take it but <laughs> just yeah I definitely that's that's my thing like I overthink how people are going to analyze me like and at the end of the day it don't matter it does not matter how people like perceive my personality at all but I'm still like I'm not going to show it all the way I'm still Mm going to be quiet in this corner even though I would love to be more expressive but I'm going to just sit right here until I feel completely comfortable. And I'll say it looks pretty. That's it. I feel like there's layers to it, right? Because you're all, I don't know, growing up in a Christian background, there is a level of like decorum we have to be, you know? And Mm -hmm. most of us don't talk about certain subjects until we get older, you know what I mean? And I know I wasn't comfortable talking about um, sex or anything like that. Um, until I was married you know Mm -hmm. Um, and so that subject was off limits there's just certain topics that are off limit I think everyone's gonna go through that like well I'm gonna keep this to myself until I'm ready to talk about it or until I feel comfortable talking about it Um, that's pretty normal but it's there that pressure to how we appear and to how we look and how we carry us I think it's important to carry yourself with a certain like energy but you have to decide what that's going to be there are people that are loud Mm -hmm. and proud and and outspoken and that's them they decided that's going to be who they are and there are people who are more like I'm going to take the low-key road I'm going to listen I'm going to be calm I'm going to be the peacemaker so as long as you yourself you develop who you are without obsessing about what people think that's kind of where I want to get to like you decide how you want to represent yourself and people are going to talk and that's just going to be that it's uncomfortable but it is what it is yeah well emmy do you have any favorite songs of the week do you need a second i can wait <laughs> well before we get to that my yeah. bad uh, i wanted to talk about what do y'all do to get yourself 
I, I, I already know my top, but what do y'all do to get yourself back into yourself? Like, like I'm kind of retreating now, I'm shutting down. I'm not, I want to just get out of my head. I just need to release. I need to come back to myself. What are like a couple of things you do to get yourself back? Um, I think for me, it's more of a, uh, what is it called when you have to expose yourself consistently to whatever is giving you anxiety? Exposure shadow therapy? Work? That's, that's a, it's a part that's of shadow work as well, yeah. I think. I need to look up specifics about shadow work, but uh-huh. um, exposure therapy? Yeah, exposure therapy. So it's more of like, okay, I get really, I retreat in social settings, but I want to actually participate more in social settings. The only way for me to actively do that is for me to consistently expose myself to uncomfortable social settings that are Mm -hmm. uncomfortable for the right reasons and aren't going to put me at risk, obviously, but like still like expose myself to that. Mm -hmm. What about y'all? Is that a question again? I'm sorry. What are the things you do to make Emerald feel like Emerald? Like I'm acting real different this week. I need to get out of my head. I'm doing too. Let me just release. This is what I do to come back into myself. Yeah. And like actually like work on showing your personality as well. Um, Talking to my friends. That that helps me show like who I am and like kind of give back to me. Because I don't know. I just I just feel like when I'm talking to them or hanging out with them or on the phone with them, I can be me. That's why I'm just, mm-hmm. I just go crazy, say whatever, do whatever, sing whatever. Mm-hmm. And like, it's so refreshing, I feel like, because they understand me. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's just like, it's a mutual understanding and it's, it's understanding that we can both can be ourselves. And so it's great. I love it. Nice. What about you, Ari? Being by myself like <laughs> no but seriously though I I don't know I think it's because I'm an only child like I grew up an only child like I feel my best when I'm just alone like I can get myself together like recalibrate like mm. you know and just really just feel back on my element because if I'm around people for too long like I just get really irritable and just not myself and so just taking a moment by myself Mm-hmm. And also, like, if I'm just really going through it where I just just been, you know, not expressing myself the way I should, just taking some time to just be by myself. And just, you know, and things and just, you know, do self-care stuff, like getting mm-hmm. my nails done, like getting my toe, getting a wax, like just, yeah, just doing that all the time really helps. Mm-hmm. I love the self-care aspect. Heck yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Skincare, my hair. Like when I do my hair, I do my skincare routine. I get fully dressed. I pop on some music. I just feel so good. I'm like, yes. But like slumping around and not taking care of myself. Like when I got my, I went out with some friends, which felt good, went out to eat and I got my feet done. And I was like, yes what was mm. I doing this whole time oh my god I feel so <laughs> cute now let me get this hair together let's get this outfit I don't care if I'm staying home today I'm gonna be fully dressed in a full-on outfit I'm gonna mm. take a picture document I wore this outfit and go about my business I feel great let's put on some music let's put on some vibes let's put on some random music like it could be r and it could be Usher hello I felt so <laughs> good after hearing Usher and NPR I felt my soul was we gonna talk cleansed. about that we gonna talk about that oh my friend sent it to me i was on it for a minute it just feel good like i just be feeling good put on a show quality time by myself i just recalibrate and sometimes get out sometimes it's getting out the house sometimes it's staying in the house it's just whatever i need i just listen hey treasure you gonna stay in today yes you are you gonna feel bad about it nope but put on some hood rap music shake my butt bend over (laughs) have a good time and mind my business like it's just different things for different days but Mm-hmm. I will say though that taking care of your part, taking care of, of yourself part, I didn't realize how much that was important to me until I got COVID. Mm-hmm. And oh. the two weeks was oh was was 
was. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt but, every single part of that was, okay? <laughs> yes, like it hit my mental health. It hit my, my health, health in general. And I remember, because I, I never... I never put my hair. I know I'll never tie my hair down because I, I was getting headaches. I couldn't could take the extra fabric, mm-hmm. so I just go to sleep. My my I had my braids in. Luckily, at least I had my braids in. But like my hair would be a mess. I would just feel so like bummyish. I'll just be walk around just like ooh, ooh. like I, <clears throat> I I was admitted. But like the moments, I ordered me some clothes. I ordered me some dresses. The minute like I felt more myself, I started taking myself, take care of myself more. I got back to my body scrubs, paid to my nails. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, who is this mm. person? Like, I this is who is she? I don't know who she is, but she is me. I feel like mm-hmm. taking care of yourself does so much more than you really think. Like, it really helps your self confidence. It really just like builds yourself higher. And so I definitely need to stay on with it because COVID showed me like, yo. How COVID showed me one, that's also like the, I need to like lose weight because I just legit felt every single thing in my body. And two, like, I really, I was so scared to lose my sense of smell that I bought so many perfumes and I (laughs) (laughs) appreciate See, I kept eating because I needed my taste. That that was my (laughs) thing. I needed to be able to taste the food. (laughs) But like, um, I realized how much like I really appreciate getting up, taking a shower that I'm not exhausted afterwards and then spraying my whole body head to toe in like body mist. Oh my goodness. It's an amazing feeling just like get a whiff of yourself where you're like going past and I just like I smell so good. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. But yeah, so we talked kind of about Usher and everything. So mm-hmm. Emmy, what have you been listening to this week? <clears throat> well, okay, so here's the thing. I kind of have two things. Mm-hmm. So I do have a song for y'all, but it's not by Usher. And it's by this RB pop group. They are called Emotional Oranges. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. I love emotional them. Emotional oranges. Okay, Ooh. so quick, quick background. Because I was like, when I first heard of this group, I was like, huh? But my friend from college, he put me onto this group. And they're based in LA. Um, it's two people. There's an artist called A, or Azrat, as, as the right, A-Z-A-D, right, R-I-H. I can't spell. You know, it's spell right. <laughs> 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 and then the other, <laughs> the other group member is Valley or V. And they came up with a song, I think last week or so, called Make Me Wanna. It's given me like all the summer vibes, has like a little Caribbean beat to it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it just screams summer to me. It screamed like beach party whatever you imagine when you hear like the music like it just gave me that feeling so it'll be added to the playlist but check them out emotional oranges they have a nice yep album. here they go oh, yeah they look cool they is it in cool. our is it in, oh is that in our link tree like the playlist yet not yet okay i'm gonna I'm add gonna it, it to, yeah I yeah, yeah no pressure it. i just wanted to know i was just like ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes emotional yes yes i also oranges. I think I also added Beyonce's new song. Break, break my, my soul. soul. That's my jam right now. You will not break song. my soul. Nothing. I don't want to sing it because I don't want to get copyrighted, but love that song as well. It is, I love the house music vibe that we're uh-huh. getting right now uh-huh. because I've loved like house music, EDM. Like I generally like, like it in passing, but uh, it makes me happy. Like I love that song. I cannot wait to see what her album is. I, Again, me and Beyonce, we July cannot, That's gonna be my day. I'm, n- I'm nothing else is happening that day. Okay. <laughs> I, I just want to say, Emerald looks like Donna Summers, and I love it <laughs> so much. When you, were, when you were like this, I was like, okay, Donna, okay, girl. Yes. <clears throat> but yeah, so that's the song y'all should check out for this week. But also, 
and we could talk about Ursula's tiny desk because I just listened to it last night. I had to make a post of my story because this man aged beautifully. I tell you, his voice sounds exactly the same since when he originally uh, dropped those albums and those singles. I don't understand how it's possible because, like, I'm trying to pit my thoughts together because this man is amazing. I love Usher. Usher is one of my top five artists. He'll always be one of my favorite vocalists. I I I love Masego. I love Lucky Day. They they don't compare to Usher. Usher to me is the king of r and I don't care about the little Jack Queen in it. I don't care mm-hmm. about um, <laughs> whoever <laughs> they try to put up against him. <laughs> I don't care. Now, Chris Brown, he he nice. He cool. I can see how they can make the, the comparison, but Usher, it's just no comparison for me. Usher reminds me that R&B is still R&B because a couple yes. times we went off course and it was fine. Like, do your thing. But he brought it back home. Everybody knows it's 11 o'clock. Or it's seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock. Seven o'clock on the dot. My bad. Oh, like it's seven o'clock. Yeah, but I say I, even when it's eleven, I'll be like, it's eleven o'clock, and we about to go to work. If you're at work trying to leave, like everyone breaks out in song. Every single person, every word. Mm-hmm. I'm like that, or nice and slow. Everybody. This Everybody man has hits. Like this man has. There's so hits. many albums. It's so yes. good. I was too young to be listening to that. I knew every word. Man. So young. <laughs> loving it yeah so this is just this is a little appreciation for usher usher raving a real player for real like we That's love true. usher i love usher but yeah check out that tiny desk he had um Vito and eric blinger as his background singers which was i was surprised but it was nice like okay supporting the other r&b artist she doesn't know the new upcoming r&b artist that's, that's cool that's nice who wouldn't want to be background singing for a uh, usher mm-hmm. i'll pull up yes <laughs> <laughs> now i love you girl <laughs> i'm gonna leave it there don't take my dream away <laughs> i know i won't i won't they're like should we ha- yeah hire her hire her yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but also after seeing all these tiny desks because there are a lot of great tiny desks uh performing performance i still have to check out maverick city musics because i had i don't know if they had curve painting no, i don't think they had curve painting but i really want to go to like the actual like performance like i want to actually be there because mm-hmm. it's it's so intimate and just so mm-hmm. like laid back and chill and like I, I want to be there. Like I want to vibe with them because he had live instruments. He had like people with the the, the, the I don't know what their instruments called. The, the their thing. Their tuba. Yeah, the tuba. <laughs> <laughs> what I I'm say tuba? <laughs> I'm actually well, getting chills thinking about it. Imagine being in there and he looks at you when he took off his shades. <gasps> yes, <gasps> we're dying. <laughs> um, I don't. Um, I don't freak out for no artist, but in that moment, I'd be like, I sure Raymond. This is Usher <laughs> Raven. <laughs> Usher Raven looking at me. Just having what does this mean? This must mean something. <laughs> Not even gonna hold y'all. I have to pee so freaking badly. I'll be right back. But y'all keep on talking. Oh my gosh! Uh, that so bread. bread. I feel relieved. I feel. I'm so glad you said that. I had to. I go was trying to wrap that. this shit up. So, <laughs> so bad. So bad. Should have told me I could go on a rip. <laughs> I love that you were no, I was loving it and then I was like I'm about to piss on this damn chair I need to go <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I, I couldn't say that word growing up my mom did not like that that's not lady like oh it's still I said it every time though but I remember my mom was like eh, eh, you can't say that word say what word not lady like Piss. pissed oh <laughs> I not say that word we're yeah. Anyway. Now, as I get older, that whole British culture thing. British culture thing. Like being Guyanese, that British background, it was very much like <laughs> wear stockings, ladies, keep your legs crossed. Like, like yes. it was like that, a little bit of that whole Bridgerton kind of thing. There was a little but, bit of that. But then you, you know want how- to talk out in some broken English. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's what it's got. a mixture, but that's a whole other topic, bro. <laughs> yeah. 
I love but, it, um, but it's interesting. Um, but having to explain to people that like, yes, I am Caribbean, but like also like there's a heavy British influence in here. It's and hilarious. It be on the plate. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to add that in. <laughs> Uh, anyway so um i don't i don't want to make sure we overlook the music section um have we relished in usher do we need to relish anywhere else um well also i just want to add i do have a playlist of all of my favorite usher songs oh Ooh. yes i had to revisit it last night after watching the tiny desk because i just had to remind myself can i just, have its plays I want to yes. be in a good mood. You can have it. <laughs> I well, just had I to remind. <laughs> just wanted to remind myself. Not remind myself, but just like go back and be like, yeah, this man had it. This man was mm-hmm. dancing on stage. This man Daddy's was singing and home. dancing. That's on <laughs> Daddy's home. I'm sorry. When Lex come in the door. Sorry, mother. Sorry, mother. What's going on here? Well, anyways, <laughs> uh, that's all we have for today, folks. <laughs> well, it was a great episode. Yes. <laughs> I cannot wait to see y'all back here. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe, comment, all the things on all our platforms. We will have a link tree at the bottom that has all the things that you need. And we'll remind me to add the playlist to that as well. And uh, mm-hmm. for us to have like a name for the playlist, I don't know if you actually have. Oh one. yeah, I got a name. Join the cousin crew. Be yes. one of us. Join the CC, the cousin crew. <laughs> Big things coming. But yeah, we'll see y'all later. Bye. Love Bye. you. Okay, and cut.